What is up guys, it's your boy Swollam here, back with another classic WoW video. So today I'm going to take a look at the negative aspects of playing hardcore on the classic era servers, some of the negative aspects, and I also want to give my opinions on why I personally think we need official hardcore servers supported and developed by Blizzard themselves. That way we can actually have the people playing hardcore playing on those servers, instead of playing on a server where it's both regular players and also hardcore players, at the same time causing some conflict. So for this video, what we are doing right now Right now is we're taking a look at a reddit post we did this live on stream yesterday so if you want to check me out live i'm live pretty much every single day both on twitch and on kick and you can find the link to both of them in the video description and a pinned comment i have also promised to do a 24 hour stream when we get to 150 followers on kick so feel free to learn to really get me closer to that goal and closer to that 24 hour live stream now let's take a look at the clip from yesterday, I really wanted to play this one on YouTube as well, that way we can get more comments and more of a discussion going, so feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as we go through the video. So here we go. So there's a post on the classic WoW Reddit that I wanted to react to super quickly as well, because this one it really shows why I personally want hardcore servers this one post let me just make sure that it's um that i can make it show on the screen right here <clears throat> transform edit transform take everything away zero this one. Uh, now we can talk about hardcore servers and one of the reasons why I personally want them to be a thing. Uh, two seconds. Here we go. This post right here shows a lot about why I personally want hardcore servers to be a thing, and also why I want them to be less moderated than our current classic era servers. And I feel like a lot of it is captioned in this one. Let me drag the tier list down below my face cam too. There we go. Oh shit, okay. Now we can see my face and we can take a look at this at the same time. So, Hardcore Classic is great and all, but it feels very isolating and also very lonely. Let me start off by saying that I love Hardcore Classic. It is definitely fun and I'm having a great time. I wanted to make this post more so about the MMO aspect of Classic and what really drew people in, and for that I would like to take it back to 2019 to 2020 Classic when there was literally 100,000 plus people right at the launch day turning servers full before people even got a chance to pick one off the list. Every starting zone had 100 plus people, every quest mob was spammed for the first week and lines would start to form. Yeah, cues, right? And it was inc an incredibly magical experience. Hardcore manages to capture only one aspect of that experience, which is the story slash questing and the immersion of being in the world. But what Hardcore fails to capture is the MMO aspect of World of Warcraft, which is being able to group with other people in your level to do hard quests slash zones, being able to craft stuff and trade people, or give people upgrades you don't need, and in general just being a part of a bigger community. I am now reaching the 40 to 50 range in Hardcore, sheesh, okay this person went really far. And it's become a ghost town, I rarely see people in these zones, maybe a couple here and there, and for the most uh, part, dungeon groups get really hard to fill the higher you go up, and once you hit 60, you're in hardcore raiding slash dungeons, which is not for everyone, and is very niche. I do like hardcore, I like that Blizzard is thinking of making official hardcore surveys, well we don't really have any confirmation on that part, but a part of me feels like hardcore isn't really that good in MMOs, because it removes 99% of social interactions and also makes it a forced single player game in a multiplayer world which feels very isolating. I understand why the hardcore rules exist, but I feel like it goes against the social aspect of what makes MMOs fun too and it makes me miss those interactions even more. 
So let's look at a couple of comments because there was one comment here that also I wanted to look at super quickly. That is my biggest thing with hardcore. It is basically a solo experience that is fun to play alongside others. There's bits here and there where you interact with others, but for the most part, you are really on your own. For me, it is exciting to play at the moment because the world feels very alive, but I sincerely doubt that I will still be playing hardcore in a year's time. I need a sense of community, a guild, and friends to play alongside to do that long term. And that is something that I've been personally really feeling when I'm playing hardcore as well. Well, most of it. There's one part right here that I don't agree too much with, and that is the ghost town at level 40 to 50. Now, obviously, I am not 40 to 50 yet. If I just hide this screen super quickly, we can take a look at my personal character in the game. So I'm currently level 37, and I feel like the, the world is still pretty much exactly just as alive. I just came out of Stranglethorn Vale today, and even in Stranglethorn Vale, I had to compete for mob tanks quite often. Even I just did a couple of quests all the way over here, and we were like 5 or 6 people in one small part of the Swallow Marsh doing quests at the same time. Right, so even now I'm still seeing people, I'm not seeing the same amounts that I used to in Westfall or Duskwood and places like that. Obviously the higher level you get, the less people there will be. But I'm also in a hardcore guild full of level 30 plus people. We currently have, it is 9.25pm on a Wednesday and we have 141 players online all of which are level 30 plus, all the way from level 30 up until level 59. We also have a couple level 60s who just hit level 60 today, but you can see there's a bunch of people. Level 50 to 59 is a ghost town, 40 to 50 is alright. Well, you definitely have a lot more experience than me in that level bracket, so I'll take your word for it, yeah. But I definitely, I, I can understand why, like level 50 to 59 there's going to be far less people playing in those zones and those who are probably try to speed through them to get to level 60 as fast as possible. Plus it's hardcore, every single level you get up there's going to be less and less people all the time, people are dying and starting over again, right? But even in my level right now, level 37, there's a bunch of people and I haven't even had problems finding a single group. The one problem that I've been seeing though is the tank shortage. There's definitely a tank shortage, a warrior shortage, which is kind of incredible because when I go to the hardcore add-on and we look at the death statistics, it looks like there's a lot of warriors playing in the second most played class, or the second most death class at least. So you can see right here, there should be a lot of warriors and every time and I'm serious, every time that I've done a dungeon, I've done four dungeons so far, we have had to wait roughly one hour to find a tank. Every single time, with, without fail, it always happens. So there's definitely a tank shortage in that aspect, at least there was for me. Maybe I just had bad RNG when I played, but I did all my dungeons at different times, on different days, and we always had to wait for a tank. Other than that though, there's a couple more things in this post that I wanted to talk about. So I wanted to talk about the social aspect. This is a huge part of pretty much any MMO that you play, and it's why Classic WoW really took off. It's not the only reason why, but it's a huge reason why Classic WoW originally took off, because there's so much social interactions. There's so many things that you don't think about, and there's so many things you don't see in the modern world of Warcraft, where all the grouping are based on, for example, doing world quests in the open world, or doing raids and dungeons together, and that's pretty much it. When it comes to Classic WoW, you have a lot of elite quests that you pretty much have to do while leveling up, and you have to actually do them. You, you have to find a group to do them. You also have quests in the open world where you are killing named mobs, and they have a 5-10 to 10 minute respawn timer. In this case, if you have 5 different people, you can usually group up and kill that one mob together. In that case, nobody has to wait. What you're seeing right now on Classic Hardcore is that there was one time when I was doing dead mines, there was a 15 person queue for the Defiance Messenger. That one has a 5 minute respawn timer, I believe, and when there's 15 people, on Hardcore you can't group up, it's against the rules, you can't group unless you're playing in a duo, in which case you have to play together from start to finish, so no grouping in the open world. These mobs that have a 5 minute respawn timer, in that case 5 minute times 15, literally 1 hour and 15 minute queue for a mob, that if we could group, we could do in literally 
10, 15, 20 minutes if all of us, if all of us could just group up instead of standing in a 15 person queue, right? So we have a lot of those mobs. If you go to the starting zone as well, there's a quest we have to kill a named mob in the starting zone, and you will probably see queues right now on Classic Era on Hardcore, right? So even then, you will start seeing those queues super early, and usually, if there were grouping allowed, which they usually should be, like grouping is a vital part of Classic, the game itself is usually designed around grouping up in the open world, it is trying to make you connect with other people, not just by like waving or saying hello, it makes you want to group up with other players all the time, and this one rule we have really like, it really breaks that. Classic WoW tries to make you group up by doing, giving you elite quests, named mobs with long respawn timers, and also you want to do dungeons, dungeon quests, quests outside the dungeon, you have so many reasons to actually group up. I feel like this one rule really breaks that immersion. You also have the fact that you can't trade, you literally can't trade here. If you go over here, you will see, no auction house, no mailbox, no trading. A lot of Classic Wilds professions are based on having the ability to trade because they want you to they want it to be a cooperative teamwork experience. If you have alchemy, for example, you will find a lot of times you will need materials that you can find from something else than herbalism. Alchemy might not be the perfect example for this, but if you have leatherworking, every now and then you will need some ores or something, or you will also need some herbs to craft different types of stuff, you will you will need different materials than just two professions. If you have engineering, you some of the times, a lot of the times, you want to have engineering. You also need to have skinning, for example, to gather some leather to make some uh, to make some. I think it's uh, the glasses or something. There's a lot of times you will need leather for engineering, but you also need to have mining for engineering. So in this case, you would need three different professions for blacksmithing. In the later levels, you want to have arcanite bars made from alchemy and if you have alchemy, you definitely want to support alchemy by having herbalism. And if you have blacksmithing, you want to support blacksmithing by having mining. But you also need alchemy or materials crafted by alchemists, right? So not having the ability to trade or auction house or even mail, it really breaks a lot of the immersion to the game itself and that cooperative teamwork, if you ask me though. Now here's the thing. Official hardcore servers made and developed and published by Blizzard could fix a lot of these problems. You can trade at max level though, yeah, true, but I just wanted to use it to make a point. You can trade at max level in this challenge, but the thing is, we shouldn't be forced to play a single ex player experience until max level. It's a multiplayer game. You should have that multiplayer element from level 1. There's, I, I understand why it's there for the add-on, but I also would not ever want to see these rules be in the official hardcore servers, ever, right? Official hardcore servers should have one thing and one thing only, they should disable the ability to resurrect, that you should still be able to use the auction house, you should still be able to trade, you should be able to mail, you should be able to group, you should be able to do whatever you want, and then if you have some people in the hardcore community who will say, oh, if you can group, then the challenge becomes so easy, well, you can still have this subset, with, like this, uh, you can still use this add-on to make it even more difficult. It's a self-found, a solo self-found challenge. It, it is though. But a lot of people that I'm seeing on my YouTube comments are saying that they want these rules to be on official hardcore servers, and this is like a thing that I'm seeing a lot of people think, that they want these rules to be on official hardcore servers, because this is the gameplay they are used to, this is the hardcore challenge, and they want this to be the thing. I do not want this to be the thing. I want official hardcore servers to be classic well without the ability to resurrect, and maybe also fix, like you said Drazen, fix uh, so shamans can't onk, uh, warlocks can't use soulstone, and paladins should probably not be able to bubble hearth. That's basically all they have to do, those three class changes, and not being able to resurrect. And that would basically be perfect, if you ask me though. <laughs> 